Welcome back to the club, guys. We're here with the third episode. We've got Chris Bricky joining us from Stockspot about his robo-advisor business and how he came up with the idea, the mistakes he's made, how he sees himself as a founder, and how to make a successful business. Welcome, Chris. Thanks for having me. What I love and love to talk about and, and I'm very passionate about is the difference between a CEO and a founder. And I think we, we just we just recently shuffled this studio around. And most I think CEOs would get very annoyed by that and you know they'd be like, okay, this is disorganized, things like that. But I think the difference is, you know. You weren't annoyed by that. You you really you know you, you pitched in. We got into this. And we moved this. We moved the room around. We made it happen, and that to me is a single signal of fully taking responsibility of your business and being a founder. How did you get that mentality? How did you get that mindset and attitude? I think you're right. I think there's a big difference between founder and CEO. I, I kind of see it as the, the founder is someone who's good at actually dealing with chaos and, and not knowing everything and, and trying to be learning everything and, and trying to just get to the ne next step. Um, and I think probably for the first couple of years in the business, I, I only really saw myself as a founder. I mean, obviously, when you don't have any employees, <laughs> there's no one to be sort of CEO of. But, and, and I always see CEO as um, becomes more about creating structure and order and, and, and actually um, creating a, a more methodical way of, of getting to your endpoint. So, um, yeah, I think there's people out there that are good at being both. I think probably the founder side came a lot more naturally to me because in my sort of previous life, I was a trader. And, and as a trader, you're basically dealing with chaos every day. You come into work, you don't know what uh, markets are have going to have thrown at you and, and you have to deal with that. Um, and, and it can be different. Every day, you know, you could come in and the market could be down 10% and you've got to deal with that. Or, or you know, there could be a big downgrade, um, you know, for a company and, and you really never know what's going on. And your job isn't to come in knowing what your day is going to be like. It's actually to come in and make sense of what's happened and actually make the most of what's happened. So, and I think that's sort of a quality that that probably, um, you know, great founders out there in the world have is, is actually making sense of chaos. Mm. Um, and, and, and probably great CEOs, um, you know, are, are actually more focused on creating, you know, processes and, and structures to, to lead to success. When you were growing up, Chris, what did you want to be? I think it changed a few times. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a geologist. <laughs> um, I, I loved um, gemstones and actually that comes through in my business now because we, we've named a few things within the company after uh, gemstones. Um, but actually from probably the age of 10 and 11, when I started to learn about the share market, um, I became like very fascinated by how it worked. The, you know, the fact that um, companies raised money to, to, to build businesses and, and then people out there could um, essentially own a part of a business. And I just thought this was, you know, one of the most amazing things that you could actually try and um, understand how businesses worked and, and benefit by um, giving bu businesses money to grow their businesses. So what got you, so, so I talk a lot about, a lot, a lot of people come up to me and, and again, they ask me questions about how do you, you know, I'm looking to get a, make an idea for a business. And it seems to me the, the way which I try to answer and say, look, the first thing you want to do is master something. And, uh, you know, that's like with an apprenticeship, you know, you spend five, seven years becoming a plumber, an electrician, and then you're an electrician. It seems to me that your mastery has been in stocks and in trading and companies and, and all the, the, the journey that's went on. I think, yeah, I think that's right, is that in, in any sort of um, area of business, I think having a really broad and, and, and deep understanding of that area actually allows you to visualize the problems and, and the opportunities to solve. So, yeah. you know, when, when you look at a, a new industry with fresh eyes, I guess you have the benefit of, of coming, you know, to a problem, you know, not having any, you know, back history in, in being involved. But I do think really understanding something, you know, pretty deeply also has some benefits. And, yep. and, and I think understanding how, how the market worked, you know, how people, um, you know, people I knew interacted with the share market and, and you know, understanding, you know, the, the disconnect there, you know, probably did, um, you know, drive the inspiration for the business. Tell us, why robo-advice? Why did you 
come up with this idea? Tell us the story of how you came to this. Well, the story basically started when a lot of my friends would ask me how to invest and, and I would um, try and solve that problem for them. So they'd come to me and say, look, I've got $10,000. You know, I want to grow that money. I know you work in the industry. How should I do it? And, and so actually I would approach that as a, you know, as a problem to solve. And I'd say, look, you know, how long are you looking to invest for? Um, you know, do you have any experience? You know, would you be comfortable if you lost 10 or 20% along the way? And I'd, I'd ask a few questions to gauge, you know, how I thought they should be investing. And then using that, I'd go and work out what I thought they should be investing in. So um, originally, the MVP of, of the product that ended up being StockSpot was actually me helping my friends open online brokerage accounts um, and then picking the right um, investments, which were um, this new product that had only just started to emerge in Australia called ETFs, which are these fantastic, low cost, um, very well diversified products. And I would buy a bunch of these ETFs, um, you know, for my friends or help them um, buy them and help them sort of set up the parameters and, and work out how they were going to manage that portfolio. Um, but I realized in, in going through that process that it was you know, very clunky. Um, you know, it wasn't a very nice experience for them. It was very confusing. Mm. Um, online brokers were set up for people that had a bit more knowledge about investing, but also had a bit more confidence to do it themselves. Um, and the only other alternative for those people was to go and see an advisor or, you know, see a broker to get advice. Um, and if they went down that path, um, that they weren't actually going to get good advice in most cases. So I, I realized there was an opportunity to actually, you know, create some sort of service to help people do that more broadly. Mm. Um, and actually to create a service that just saved my time to actually do it in a more efficient way for my friends. Sounds to me, it's, it's very similar to the Airbnb story, right? The guys were renting out a room. Um, <clears throat> on, on air mattresses uh, and they proved that for several years before then they went to potential investors and they did it, I think it was three or four years um, and then to go and actually, you know, say, here's a business model, here, here's something we can do, which is fantastic, right? So, you, you, yeah, you've I already think, really yeah, built Brian the Chesky business. changed that model quite a bit along the way as yeah. well. So, um, you know, his theory, I think, originally was that people would all be happy just to sort of sleep on people's couches. It was more of like a couch surfing concept. Um, and, and I think he didn't originally think people would be comfortable, um, you know, renting a whole house from someone or having a, a whole sort of space um, and, 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 you know, getting that for a period of time. So, so what, what I, was, I was keen to understand is, so when you went from that to what Stockspot is and the model, Tell us the mistakes and challenges you had and the, the paths you went down and the, the pivots you had to make to get to where you are today. There was probably a, like a few kind of, uh, I think, mistakes along the way. I, I think one of them in the early days is, is, and I think it's a problem a lot of founders have, is you think that you need to put out a very polished product, um, you know, and, and you think that the, you know, the product needs to look perfect to get any sort of interest from people um, and, and, and that if it doesn't look perfect, you know, there'll be no interest at all. And, and I, see, I, I see now a lot of early stage businesses make this mistake where they invest way too much time in, in trying to, to deliver a, a, a polished version one of the product. And I think probably for the first um, you know, six months, my time was all invested in the parts of the product that, you know, I, I later realized, you know, weren't as important and, and really... Um, customers just wanted that sort of simple problem to be solved, even if, um, you know, it looked a little scrappy or it didn't quite work perfectly at the start. So I think um, I, I spent six months, uh, so I spent a whole year at home basically getting the business from idea stage to actually customer number Were one. Were you working at the time? So I left my job. Right. Um, so this was in um, early 2013. Um, I, I was trading at the time. I, I pitched to my boss, look, I think there's a, you know, I think the financial industry is about to change big time. And I think that there's a great opportunity to be part of that and, and to drive a lot of that change. You know, this is very risky for me because, you know, I, I was in a pretty good job, a job that I loved. Um, but I said, look, I think it's worth me spending a couple of years seeing if, if, it's, if, this, if there's a business in this. 